Hello everyone. We'll just take a second and uh, we'll start the session. By the way, it's good to see all of you again. The first time I was here on the virtual lawyer was in the month of April, peak of COVID-19. It's not that the peak is over by now, but uh, at that time all of us were really scared about the deadly virus. So it's good to see you guys again. The last time I spoke, I was sitting at my home. This time around, I am in my office. So that's a welcome change. My name is Sayam Keturpal and I'm a partner in the law firm KNY Partners. And uh, this time around, uh, the topic is a little different. Uh, it's about the confidentiality laws in India. I had written an article on the same topic. If you Google it, you'll come to know about it. That was way back in 2013. So uh, when Janvi spoke to me and I told her that I want to speak on the topic of confidentiality, laws relating to confidentiality in India. So I felt very enthusiastic and I was feeling nostalgic at the same time. Seven years later, speaking on the same topic, little changes have been made in the laws uh, because of the judgments of the Supreme Court of India and the Delhi High Court and High Courts all around the country that have come. So, uh, am I audible? You can just give a thumbs up or any sign would be fine that if my voice is clear and then I can start speaking. Alright, so um, I'll uh, give a brief introduction. So as far as the topic is concerned, it is, with res it is relating to laws relating to confidenti confidentiality in India. And I will be talking in the context of employers and employees. So what the real scenario is that when we talk about an organization, let's say, and as far as an organization is concerned, consider an organization to be like a chariot. And the employers and the employees working in that organization mm -hmm. are like its wheels. So the wheels, because of the wheels, the chariot moves along. And it is very important in any organization for both employers and employees to be there. It is a mutually beneficial relationship. The employees have to, they want to work in an organization at the same time. The employers, they are the ones who try to take care of their organization while making sure that the business runs smoothly. So what is it that is done? The employers want to make sure that they hire the good employees. They will also want to make sure that all those things that are taught to the employees during their training period is not disclosed or not used for the benefit of the other organization. At the same time, all these organizations will also try to ensure that any information passed to their employees stays within the organization. Not once but often it has been seen that when an employee joins an organization and after some time he decides to resign or he speaks to his boss that enough I am done with this organization now I am moving towards greener pastures in life. What really happens is it raises the eyebrows among the employers. They know that the employee has worked with them for a particular number of years or particular number of months he has learnt the way their organization functions. So over, over the years, the employees, they've become cautious. All of them, they've got their own legal teams, their legal departments. And what they've done is they've started making the employees sign contracts. Now those contracts are either the employment agreements or those contracts are in the form of what you may have heard of uh, NDAs, non-disclosure agreements, non-disclosure, non-solicitation agreements. So what is the validity of these agreements? That is the one thing that we are going to talk about in this small session. The other thing that we are going to talk about is how, how feasible or how valid these agreements are in the eyes of law. So in my legal career, more than once, in fact quite often, when I've seen contracts coming to me, what have the difficulty that I've seen is that in a lot of non-disclosure agreements, a lot of NDAs, the clause is always mentioned that 
supposedly an employee A is working with an organization X, a clause will always be mentioned that when the employee A resigns or he is terminated after his re resignation or after his termination, he cannot work with another organization Y for three years or four years. Which, according to me, and this is what the laws have also, you know, the Delhi High Court, the Supreme Court have also reiterated a number of times, which I will be uh, giving you citations along with the judgments as well. They've clearly stated that that is not allowed. Section 27 of the Indian Contract Act, because, because the concept of uh, non-disclosure, non-solicitation agreements, this concept comes from Indian Contract Act. So what has really happened is, Section 27 of the Indian Contract Act, I will also read it for your benefit, what it actually says. Section 27 of Indian Contract Act says that every agreement by which anyone is restrained from exercising a lawful profession, trade or business of any kind is to that extent void. What does this mean? This clearly means that if an employee is resigning and going to pursue a lawful profession, let's say he is going to work with another organization, Section 27 allows him to do that. Now no employer can actually ask him to sit at home for n number of years till the time the time period which is mentioned in the NDA, the non-disclosure agreement or let's say the employment agreement. So more often than not these I would say these clauses are mentioned in the NDAs and the employment agreements which hold no value in the eyes of law. Now I will also cite a couple of judgments for you. What has really happened is because as far as our country India is concerned, we do not have specific legislation qua employers and employees. Obviously uh, the Officials Secrets Act is there but that does not, uh, the employee empl employer employee relationship does not come within the same purview. That is for espionage, that is for spies, that is a totally different concept altogether which had come in the year 1923. Obviously, the government of India adopted it after independence also, but that is not applicable for employer-employee relationship. Now, when we talk about employer-employee relationship, what really happens is, way back in 1981, the Honorable Supreme Court of India and the judgment of Superintendent's Company of India versus Krishna Murgai had clearly stated that when an employee goes to the doors of an employer asking for employment, all he is concerned about at that point in time is, that what is the remuneration that he is going to get, what is his CTC going to be, what kind of work is he going to do, they are not really bothered about the kind of contracts which they are signing. Obviously these considerations I would say are actually myopic but if you see in the practical scenario all of us in fact uh, even lawyers also not lawyers but other engineers, doctors, architects, there are so many people in so many different professions who have, while you know joining certain organizations, have been signing contracts. And those contract are, contracts are really watertight contracts. Now if you see the contracts, those contracts are standard form of contracts. Once you say yes to the job and you decide yes, I'm going to start working from a particular date, the second thing that the employer is going to do is, he is going to make you join is going to make you sign contracts. Those contracts are going to be standard form of contracts which will obviously have an arbitration clause these days. That will have all the other boilerplate clauses and all the other clauses, the non-compete, non-solicitation, confidential information kind of clauses which is going to be there and you cannot actually negotiate with the employer that I will not be signing on this contract just because you have the confidential information clause. One more thing that is taken into consideration is, first I will read the relevant clause of the judgment for you. In the judgment of Superintendent's Company of India versus Krishna Murgai, the Supreme Court said that the employee covenants should be carefully scrutinized because of an inequality of bargaining powers between the employer and the employee. In fact, bargaining may not occur as the employee is often presented with fate accompli with a standard form of contract. Tempted to take the job, 
no one would give a thought to the restrictions being imposed often for short term benefits a myopic view is adopted now what really happens is this is one part of it now later on this was way back in 1981 after this uh, delhi high court and in, in fact the honorable supreme court of india also sp spoke about a judgment in fact way back in 1967 also they had spoken about a judgment which was considered to be landmark judgment right now in the case of niranjan shah golekari versus century spinning and manufacturing company in this judgment the apex court agreed that the non compete agreement with the employee was a reasonable to protect the interest of the company as it had spent a considerable amount on training and the foreign collaboration now what really happens is once an employee says that fine i am going to resign and as far as the employer is concerned the alarm bells are ringing or oh, this employee is going to resign he had so much confidential information with us what is really going to happen with us now now supreme court has also stated that supposedly an employer has spent an x amount on the employee for its training and the employee let's say for a reason he wants to resign for a period sooner than what the employer had anticipated or expected now the employee shall be liable to pay that amount to the employer for the training cost which he has spent now more often than not a question which comes up is what constitute as confidential information lot of employers have been trying to misuse this fact in their employment agreements as an arm twisting tactics and have been trying to say that because you've come to our organization you worked in our organization you've seen how we function you've seen who are our clients you've seen how how those employers have been how do you, how how we been dealing with our clients so on and so forth this is confidential information now way back in 2006 the delhi high court in the judgment of american express versus priya puri this in fact came in 2005 2006 had very clearly enunciated that as far as general know how is concerned or let's say client information with respect to their contact details or where their office is or what kind of business they are pursuing these are the things which are already in public domain now things which are already in public domain you cannot tomorrow come up and say no this is confidential information just because a particular client was associated with an employer and the employee was working on their uh, let's say contracts or their tasks it would not constitute it to be confidential information confidential information has to be specific it has to be something which is not in public domain confidential information has to be something which is not known to public at large things which are available in public domain things which are there on you know one click of a button away for you which are there online that will not constitute to be confidential information now as far as india is concerned india does not have a specific legislation when we talk about confidential information united states of america was one of the first countries to come up with the concept of confidential information and they have a proper enacted law on it after the usa there are other countries as well countries like czech republic france mexico russia japan germany australia who came up with specific laws of confidential information and confidentiality now way back in 2008 the legislature in its wisdom came up with a concept uh, came up with the bill of national national innovation bill which the draft was there but it never came, never became an act that is there so we are still awaiting for a proper confidential law to come to cover that ambit we've been uh, uh we've been if you ask uh, any lawyer they've been telling you and they will be talking about ndas which are non disclosure agreements now the second thing which we have to consider over here is let's say if an employee has actually divulged the confidential information there is some specific confidential which information which was there with the employers and the employee has actually divulged it and given it to the other competitor which has caused grave losses to the employer 
what is the remedy that the employer has one thing which we need to consider is as far as the criminal law in india is concerned there is no specific provision in criminal law which is the indian penal code which talks about divulging of confidential information so what are the other sections that can be taken into consideration one is theft theft obviously is there then there is cheating section 420 then there is criminal breach of trust section 406 now there is a difference between section 406 and 420 supreme court in its wisdom has obviously uh, supreme court as well as high courts ranging from uh, delhi high court to bombay high court to kerala high court gujarat high court as well and there is one judgment of rajasthan high court as well they have differentiated what what would constitute an offence under section 420 and what would constitute as an offence under section 406 now when we talk about section 406 sec in section 406 it talks about criminal breach of trust so for that there first needs to be an entrustment only when there is a fair entrustment and later on the other side you know they have the bad intention they have a mens rea then it constitute as criminal breach of trust when we talk about cheating which is 420 in cheating there may or may not be entrustment entrustment does not need to be there these are the criminal provisions which are there in the ipc when we talk about uh, divulging of illegal divulge of confidential information now let's go on the point of what are the remedies which the employer has one remedy that the employer has is if he has signed an employment agreement and also uh, an nda which is a non disclosure agreement so on and so forth the first thing that the employer will do is he will file a suit which will be a suit for injunction that my confidential information has been leaked by my employee to the other organization and this needs to stop for that a suit for injunction will be filed it may also be the case that the other person the employer might have faced damages because of this so when he will file the suit for injunction to bo- against both the parties who has divulged the confidential information who has leaked the confidential information and also to the other organization or the third person to whom he has divulged the confidential information against both the persons a suit will be filed suit for injunction along with seeking for damages this is the civil remedy in this now in 2013 another judgment of delhi high court came a very famous judgment which is independent news services versus anurag muskan this came in the year 2013 what had really happened in this matter is that a particular news anchor big anurag muskan had signed a contract win one particular one particular news channel and what he did was he signed another contract and started working for another news channel now what really happened was in an arm twisting move the delhi high court restrained from the news anchor for working for seven straight days with that particular news agency just to send a message that when you signed a contract with a particular organization you have to work with that organization for some time you just cannot breach the uh, contract and the clauses which are mentioned there and you just cannot work start working with somebody else by and large if you look at the larger picture the indian courts have generally taken a liberal liberal view towards the employees and the reason behind taking the liberal view is that the courts have seen what is the bargaining power of the employees vis-a-vis the employers generally the employers are like it is a proper organization they are in a better position to fight and to deal with their employees the employees on the other hand will be only looking for short term gains being their salaries their ctc or what kind of work they are going to get if they have better opportunities they will be working somewhere else therefore by and large the courts have taken a liberal view at the same time the courts in fact delhi high court other high courts as well and the supreme court of india has also taking this view into consideration that the employees cannot treat the non disclosure and non solicitation non solicitation agreements merely as a piece of paper 
it needs to be followed in later in spirit but if the standard form of co standard contracts are too much in favor of the employers even in those cases also the supreme court and the high courts have held those clauses to be void that is very important so it is not that anything that is penned down anything that is mentioned in black and white in a contract in an nda will be followed in letter and spirit it needs to be scrutinized that whether that particular particular clause is viable whether that particular clause uh, is something which is considered to be neutral or whether it is completely lopsided again before i end the session i would again like to remind everyone section 27 of the indian contract act which talks about agreement in restraint of trade is void if anybody is signing a contract where it says that once you resign from the from the organization for x number of years you cannot work with somebody else that agreement in rest that agreement which is in restraint of trade will be considered to be void now if anybody has any questions i am uh, more than happy to answer them i'll just check things have been asked all right uh, in between i would like to cite one more judgment also i just uh, got reminded of that fact and i also did not cover one area which is the inf uh, it act now as far as it act is concerned the relevant section in the it act is section 72a which also needs to be taken into consideration can you please repeat the last one in section 27 all right my friend uh so as far as section 27 is concerned section if you read the relevant section it is talking about the fact that agreement in restraint of trade is void now what needs to what what i have seen over the years in lot of ndas and lot of employment agreements is that they have specific clauses mentioned supposedly if a person is working for a software company they will mention a particular clause in the agreement saying that you will be working with us for so and so uh, you are going to work with us after you resign you cannot work with another employer for the next 3 years now this clause is not valid nobody can stop the other person for working for somebody else all that needs to be taken into consideration is that you do not divulge any confidential information of the other side if you do that that will that that is something which is going to invite penal provisions as well and then the other person you know gets a civil right also to file a case against you but it is not that once you resign from a particular organization and just because you had signed a contract where it says that you cannot work with anybody else for x number of years so you won't be able to work that is not correct at all you can work for somebody else also what is the ideal format for non dis uh, non disclosure clause in an agreement now there is no ideal format for the non disclosure clause what happens is generally when an nda non disclosure agreement is signed now for all different companies different organizations confidential information will depend from case to case basis so generally what happens is in all these contracts in the definition clause confidential information is defined as to what means by confidential information for them so on the basis of what is defined in the definition clause as confidential information will pave way as to what is written in the non disclosure clause in an agreement then there is a penal provision which is mentioned it, it will be mentioned that if you disclose this information this is how we are going to take action against you so there is not not going to be any ideal format it will depend on case to case basis kindly explain about the remedies uh, 
of the employee if not getting paid amid lockdown see my dear friend anshul uh, this is not at all related to the confidential information but i will also clarify this to you uh, as far as the period of lockdown is concerned a uh, lot of people uh, there was a lo- lot of debates which were going on then there were cases which were filed in supreme court and delhi high court as well again it depends from case to case basis what kind of employment agreement has that particular employee has uh, signed and it more depends on the force majeure clause which is mentioned in all the agreements including the employment agreement as well but as far as uh, i would say employees getting their salary is concerned rather than it being a legal responsibility it is more of a moral responsibility of the employers to pay their employees lot of private organizations have gone on to lay off lot of employees i heard i i saw it in the news the other day even indigo has laid off around 10% of the employees lot of other people have also been doing it and the employees who are not satisfied with this they are moving to court because of this so that will imp- depend on what kind of employment agreements they have signed what is the recourse if someone violates the nda abroad where will be the jurisdiction indian court or abroad janvier this is a very good question see in all the agreements uh in all the agreements whether the agreement uh is signed in india or abroad the agreements will always have a jurisdiction clause so whether the case is going to be filed in india or abroad will depend on the jurisdiction clause mentioned in the agreement again i would like to clarify something over here supposedly an agreement is signed in delhi now one of those parties is in mumbai the other parties is in delhi and the business is in mumbai and delhi and in the agreement it is clearly mentioned that if there is any dispute between the parties the courts of delhi shall have the jurisdiction only in that case jurisdiction of delhi will be made out so even in the non disclosure agreement also if there is a proper particular jurisdiction clause that is mentioned the jurisdiction will be decided as per as the jurisdiction clause which is mentioned in the agreement what if there is an absence of a non disclosure then also can employees be stopped from sharing any confidential information now my de- uh, anant hi anant so anant as far as absence of non disclosure clause is concerned if that is there in the agreement see now then i, I again it depends what you sign in the agreement but then it all depends all, also on the fact that whether there is a mutual understanding between the parties if there is no clause in the agreement but let's say your employer sends an email to you where he says that i am going to send this email to you this is confidential do not share it with any third party still you go on to do that then that is not correct then you can't do that so this thing has to be taken into consideration so it is not only the agreement supposedly the emails are exchanged between the parties there are whatsapp messages where the employer is saying listen anant i am going to tell this thing to you but you will not share it with a third party you cannot do that that all that will also become a confidential information in that case okay so i am getting one more question from shubhankar what is the best way for a startup to assure that non disclosure of their idea or confidential information while are working with their packagers or suppliers or the staff handlers for their website what is the best way for a startup to well the best way for you would be to engage any lawyer you can also engage me if you want to and then what you need to do is you need to get proper uh, non disclosure non solicitation agreements watertight agreements being signed with them so that you do not face any problem in future it is always better to have good agreement signed rather than looking for a cure in future by going to courts then i have received one more question which is can we restrain a business partner for a particular period of time through non complete clause after such partner exists exits the business yes you can do that there are specific clauses in the partnership act as well and uh, that can also be taken into consideration 
in the contract as well as well see all that needs to be seen over here is as far as a partner is concerned you know if we start dissecting the agreements and we start seeing then what we actually need to see over here is whether the other partner had a bargaining power when he was signing that signing that contract with you was he aware of the fact that what is he going to sign and what is it going to lead to if supposedly they decide to part ways in future so it would all depend on the agreement again okay any other question by anybody else or we can just end the session okay no more questions thank you so much and i'll also be happy to answer any questions uh so uh, i am also there on instagram and if you want to drop in any questions you can do that on the virtual lawyer handle itself and i'll be happy to answer all your questions i hope i was able to uh, explain the small concept of section 27 and as far as confidentiality confidentiality is concerned vis-a-vis -vis the relationship of employer and employee uh before i end this i would like to thank professor manjula batra for giving me this opportunity and the ever smiling face of uh, janvi sharma who's always there and is always a great help thank you guys thank you so much